Hello and welcome back SEO pros. Today we are going to be going through a complete guide for Screaming Frog in 2021. Now if you're not familiar with what Screaming Frog it is, it is a software that you can use to crawl a website and it basically tells you what's wrong with the website that you're crawling. So this is really good if you're trying to offer services to a company that needs help with their websites and for instance maybe they don't know what's going on with their website, they don't know what's wrong with it. This tool will make you uh, let you identify really quickly what's going on with that site. So, um, by the way, there's a template I'm going to be showing you how to use with Screaming Frog, and it's a free template. It, there's also a paid version. I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video, as well as um, some other things that you can go grab if you want any of my courses. I have like a bundle of stuff that you can grab. It's up to you, but either way, it's going to be in the description if you want to go check it out. So first thing you got to do in order to get Screaming Frog set up is you obviously have to go download it. I will leave a download link in the description too so you can go grab it. But let's go grab Screaming Frog and get started. I'm going to do a screen share for you. So we're going to go over to ScreamingFrog.com or ScreamingFrog.co.uk. Okay, so you're going to go download it. Um, now there's a comparison here. It tells you free versus paid. Um, the, really the biggest difference between the free version and the paid version is the uh, the free version gives you um, gives you 500 URLs that you can crawl on a website. The paid version gives you like unlimited. So if there's um, you know a bunch of uh, pages on the website and you can't crawl all of them, it's because you don't have the paid version. Also, with the uh, with the free version, you don't get to do Google Analytics integration and Search Console integration. And the problem with not being able to do those things is that you're going to have a um, harder time being able to pull all the analytics into the crawl. We're just going to use the free version for this um, because you don't really need the paid version. A lot of the stuff you can do without having Google Analytics or Google Search Console integrated or being a, or even having to crawl you know more than 500 URLs. Um, I think the paid version is like $180 so if you do end up doing a lot of audits I probably would get the paid version but um, again like if you're just starting out and you're just trying to get like some some basic like local websites crawled and figure out what's wrong with them. Um, generally if you're starting out doing this stuff you're only going to be wanting to work with local clients anyways because it's a lot easier to rank those sites than to do something like national or like a mega site. So <clears throat> I would recommend just getting the free version um, but eventually after you do a couple audits you can start charging for them and it'll pay, the, the audits will pay for the tool. So let's go over to download. We'll just press download it. Download now. It works for Mac and Windows I think. Okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to open it up. So let's just start with this part. This is where you're going to be putting in all your URLs. So any website you want to crawl you just enter the URL. We're going to do chasefinder.com and press start. And what you'll start to see when you when you, when you you go, um, you're just going to see all of the URLs show up on your crawl. These are all the different things on the website. Now there's a bunch of different um, filters that you can use. In here you'll see if I click on this it'll say HTML, JavaScript, CSS, images. Generally you're just going to be filtering by HTML because you just want to see the pages that are on the website. So you don't really care too much about you know the images or the PDFs. You can do that if you're trying to see if they, if they have certain things on the website like PDFs but for the most part you're just going to filter by HTML so you can see all of just the HTML pages on the website. Um, now, before I kind of go into what you're going to want to look at in terms of all the different errors, let me just go over these top, like this first row up here. So up here at the top we have file, um, open. This is I think if you want to open a recent crawl that you've done. So um, if you save a crawl or you want to um, you know, load a crawl that you've done, you can do that in here. Um, if you wanted to save the, the crawl, you would do that in here with the control S or just save, save as. Let me actually clear this crawl so we can go in there. Um, configuration, this is if you wanted to load a certain, um, well I'm, I'm not sure 100% if they changed this yet but if you wanted to load like a certain layout that you have or a certain type of crawl, um, this is, it's supposed to be able, like if I change these columns right here, it's supposed to be able to, um, you're supposed to be able to save these columns and then, um, and then, and then load that configuration, it will, it'll go by the columns that you've sorted. Um, I think it'll also do other things like maybe load some presets you've had in here like if you like want to crawl certain types of things. I'm not 100% sure on the configuration because it always has been kind of confusing but I think these are all the different things that you can configure. Um, looks like the speed of the crawl, um, certain types of links, um, Google Analytics, Google Search Console, 
Um, but this has always been kind of wonky and one of the biggest problems that I actually had with this back when I first started really kind of getting into Screaming Frog was the, uh, the fact that the uh, configuration like was never really saving correctly and I would try to give people my configuration and it wouldn't load for them. So I don't know if it's been fixed yet, but apparently I heard from a couple people that it has. Um, my voice sounds different, does it? I think it sounds fine to me. Um, <clears throat> okay, so, uh, so that's file and then we have scheduling. I think this is if you wanted to schedule crawls. This is all like licensed versions, I guess. They've been adding a lot of new stuff for the, for the people who have the licenses. Um, spider, this is if you wanted to only crawl certain types of things like images, CSS, um, certain types of links, AMP pages, extraction. So if you wanted to, for instance, not extract page titles or not extract um, meta descriptions, you could change that in here. Limits, so this is how many pages you might want to crawl on a website, how deep you want to go into the website with crawl depth, um, which basically just means how how many links you're going to follow into the website. Um, rendering, this is that I'm not actually sure about. Advanced, um, so these are different things that you can you can basically force. For instance, like if there's a no index tag on a page, then um, you can respect no index. And basically what that means is that the, uh, the robot won't go and actually crawl the, those pages that are no indexed. Or if you have a canonical, meaning like one, your one page is pointing to another page saying this page is about that page, then it's going to say, okay, well, we are going to crawl that page. So you can actually, you can do more advanced stuff in here, but I would generally leave all this stuff um, just at default. Preferences, so you can actually choose what you determine as a good thing or a bad thing. So there's defaults in here. Um, please decrease my size. Okay, let me see if I can do that. Do that. Um, so there's defaults in here, and one of them is like, you know, H1 length or alt text character length or image size, so um, low content word count. So you can basically set a standard for your crawl where you can say, well, you know, if there's um, H1 tags that are above 70 characters or above 80 characters, then um, show that as a warning sign. Or if there's low wor content word count, like if there's under a thousand words instead of under 200 words, give us a warning sign. And then you can actually uh, export all of those warning signs based on the parameters you set in there. But again, that's kind of the more, um, that's like the advanced advanced stuff in there, in the spider. Um, content, so let's go look at this. There's a lot of new stuff in here that I actually haven't really spent a ton of time on. Um, define the content area to be used for word count, near duplicates, and spelling and grammar. Um, so I'm not really sure. I guess this looks for duplicate content, and I don't know if I would use this. I haven't done a lot of experimenting with it, but my, my favorite, tools are the tools that are actually specifically built for just like one thing. And I don't know if I would trust Screaming Frog 100% for content, especially duplicate stuff. Um, and also I, I don't think they have any way of checking external content too. So content on a website that isn't your own. So what I like to use is, is Sightliner and Copyscape. Sightliner lets you see all of your internal duplicates and then Copyscape lets you see all of your external. So if anybody's put content of yours on their websites, um, but if you guys have tried this, let me know. I'm interested to hear from you um, about the content um, duplicate checker in Screaming Frog. Give me a one or just let me know afterwards if you're rewatching this and I'm interested to hear if you have used it. And if, if you have, you know, tell me if it works well. So robot settings, show internal URLs blocked by robots. Um, so yeah, so this will just show you the different errors for robots.txt if anything's blocked. Um, CDNs, so this I guess you can test whether or not CTNs, CDNs work or not, which is like a content delivery network. Um, so a lot of this stuff in here, by the way, like I don't really, I've never really spent a lot of time on. Um, the biggest things that you really wanna look for um, is like the API access. So this is really cool because um, if you do get the pro version, this is like probably one of the most helpful things that you'll be able to use. Um, is the Google Analytics, Google Search Console, and then something like Ahrefs because you can actually export how authoritative the pages are and how, um, how much traffic they're getting and what kind of click-through rates they're getting. So if you go to Google Analytics like this and you connect your account if you have the paid version, um, what you can do is you can actually say, hey, you know, can you crawl how many sessions this page has or um, can you tell me the bounce rate or the Google Analytics site speed test? Um, and so this is really helpful because 
when you're doing audits at a large scale, it's nice to be able to see the traffic for all these different pages, as well as like the different analytics data like average session duration, bounce rate, conversion rate. Um, Google Search Console, when you hook this up, gives you a click-through rate and impressions for the page and so on and so on. So you end up getting, when you're, when you, after you do a crawl, you get like hundreds of tabs that show, not hundreds, but you know, 10 or 20 tabs from Google Analytics, Google Search Console that show you data that you wouldn't normally get just from a regular crawl. But obviously you do have to have, um, you do have to have Google Analytics and Google Search Console hooked up to the crawl in order to do it, which means you have to have the logins to those um, or at least some sort of edit access to those in order to hook them up to Screaming Frog. And then with Ahrefs um, or any of these other things like Moz, you, it'll, um, Screaming Frog will show you the, um, the authority of those pages as well, so how powerful they are, which is kind of cool. Um, so that's API access. And then um, um, columns or user interface. So this is, um, this is kind of cool. You can make it dark. But uh, the part that's really important about this the columns is that again, like if you wanted to see your status code errors first, or you wanted to see the content types first, or you wanted to see the title tags, you can rearrange all that stuff. And when you export it, it's really helpful to have it all lined up. Um, again, the problem though is I don't know if they save these layouts anymore because um, unfortunately, like I don't, I don't know why they weren't letting you save it before. So you would spend all this time resorting the or sorting out the columns so that it lines up the way you want it, and then it wouldn't save those, and you, you'd have to do it, redo it every time before. Um, so mode, so there's like different ways that you can kind of list out the um, the way the data looks on here. So if you wanted to see like a list view like this if you wanted to see the spider view I don't really know like I just keep it default um, so I don't know if it really matters which mode you're in too much bulk export this is if you want to export certain types of stuff like links or security errors so on and so on reports so I think this just gives you kind of uh, reports on all the different things I think it's very similar to bulk export except it just shows you um, different issues that might be going on with like page speed and pagination, more of the technical errors, um, which this one doesn't. This is more of like the HTML errors, I guess. Um, sitemap, so XML sitemap, this will give you a, um, an XL, XML sitemap of your uh, website if you want to grab that. Visualizations, this gives you like some weird crawl tree graph, which looks kind of weird. I'll show you how that looks in a second. Crawl analysis, this is new, I'm not really sure. You got, and then the license and the help. So let's just go crawl a website really quick, chaserunner.com. And let me show you what that visualization looks like so you can see it. Crawl tree graph. So you can see here, it gives you kind of like, oh, here's the home page, then it goes to these pages. It just kind of shows you how everything's being linked. And then you have a directory tree graph as well, which is similar, except it just does it by the file the file path like, or the folder path like this. Um, so let's go into all these different tabs. So basically all the tabs you see up here are all the same tabs you see on the right. Um, it looks kind of confusing, but it, for some reason it's kind of redundant. So right here, um, this is all the internal URLs on the website. If I filter by HTML, I can see all of the different internal URLs. If I type, if I click on external, this will show me all of the URLs that are being linked to from the website. So externally, meaning that these pages are all being linked to from the home page basically or from somewhere on the website. These pages are all being linked from some of these pages but to other websites like Twitter or Stripe or you know whatever. Um, security, this shows us if there's any security errors on the website um, and it basically tells you this by HTTP or HTTPS I believe. It looks like all of my uh, URLs are HTTPS which is good. Um, and I think you can filter, yeah, so you can filter by HTTP or HTTPS. And I think my one HTTP URL is actually 301. So that means it's redirected to the preferred version, which is great. Um, and then the cool part about this, by the way, when you go like this, it'll give you dr different drop downs and it'll show you, hey, maybe you want to look at these different things like bad content type or missing this thing or, you know, f um, insecure, whatever. So uh, you can go through these different, uh, basically these different menu items. And all of these menu items, by the way, are under on the right. So sometimes it, I think it's honestly easier to look on it at it from the right because everything you're going to see on the right is the same thing that you're going to see up here with the filter tab. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, let me show you. So if I go to response codes here, um, that's going to be the same thing that I'm going to see on the right here. And I think it is whenever I go like this, whenever I click on the next thing, it just takes me to Whatever, wherever that is on the right. And then my drop down right here 
is going to be the same drop down that's right here. So it's easier just to visualize all of it on the right because then it just give me no, gives me number counts on the things that I need to fix. And if you don't know what I mean here, let me show you. So right here we have um, summary. This is um, the total number of URLs that were crawled. So we have uh, 500 URLs on the website, crawled 100% of the website. Um, oh, sorry, it, total URLs encountered 500. Um, total URLs crawled 496. So I got, I just, I just made the cut. T total internal URLs 352. Total, total external URLs, so URLs pointing to outside websites, um, uh, 148. Um, and then internal. So now we can start going in each thing. So here's all the H, um, the pages that were encountered right here. Um, here's all the images that were encountered. Here's all the external URLs. Um, and then I can start going to the, each of the other things. So like security. So um, only one HTTP error found. And generally the things towards the top are the biggest errors. Um, let me see if I can. You, are you guys following along so far? Are we all good? Give me a one in chat if everything seems seems good so far. Make sure we're all on the same page here. Okay, so um, so HTTP generally, like if you find an error like this, that's going to be kind of the worst thing. Like you want to make sure that you don't have that you do have SSL on your website. Um, and then you can see here's all of the ones that are good. Um, unsafe cross origin links. I don't even know what this is, but I'm sure I think there's documentation for each of these things. It would be nice if they just had a little link that told you what some of this stuff meant. But I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you can just um, um, copy this and then plug it into Google and, and Screaming Frog will tell you what it is. Um, but again, a lot of this stuff is newer. I'm not really sure what, um, I'm not really sure what some of it is. But uh, yeah, biggest thing is like the stuff towards the top. Um, response code, so pages blocked by robots.txt. And these are fine because I don't need these pages showing up on my website. Um, success pages, so I have, um, 475 pages that are, are fine, they're good, they're crawlable, Google can see them. Redirect pages, so these are all the pages that are being are being redirected to other pages. Um, this page is actually 404, meaning that some page on my website is linking to a page that's broken, so I need to go fix that. And I believe if I click on it too, it'll show me the origin of it. Uh, might be wrong about that, let's see, in links. So yeah, from, from my home page. So I need to get rid of that, um, I need to get rid of this on my home page because it's showing and it's a 404 error. Server errors, so this would be where all the server errors show up. And that's how you can fix them. I'll just give you a list of them. And again, the cool part about this is you can export any of these errors and you can categorize them. You can like have a bunch of different exports. So like issues here, issues here, issues here. And you can turn it into basically like an SEO proposal that you can give to people that um, you can show them the things that are wrong with their website. So URL, um, so if there's uppercase um, letters in your URLs, um, if there's underscores, if there's um, parameters over 115 character URLs, page titles, so um, if you have a bunch of page titles in here that are um, either missing or you have duplicate titles or they're over 60 characters or, or below 30, and by the way, just to make this really easy, the easiest way to tell all the things that are messed up on your website, I actually did a, um, the spreadsheet I told you about earlier, I'll show you how it works. Um, you can export all of these issues. Let me just, uh, let me go to internal, I'll filter by HTML and I'll press export. And then I can use this spreadsheet and it has formatting set up. And what the formatting does is it, um, it gives you all of the stuff in reds and greens so you know which ones to fix based on the, the formatting. So let me go actually get that spreadsheet so I can show you. Um, and by the way, I will leave link, the, link the spreadsheet in the description of this video. Um, I will say that uh, the paid version of this template has the conditional formatting, the free version doesn't. Um, the free version is just the checklist. We got all the different errors. So when you export your, um, your crawl, um, what you can see is that it'll give you everything that's good or bad. So that way you don't have to actually remember because the hardest part about all of this stuff in Screaming Frog is like going in here and remembering everything. <laughs> so instead of having to remember everything, all of this stuff, what you can do is you can, um, <laughs> you can just export it and then you plug it in. You, so you would open up your file. Let me show you how to do that. We just exported it on our desktop and here it is. Double click to open it. How much does SSL affect the rankings? Um, I would say definitely like uh, 
at least like 10% because, especially on Chrome, maybe even more, just because Google will show a warning symbol for anybody who tries to hit a website without SSL on Chrome. You know, that's gonna really affect your bounce rate. So it might even be higher. And they've also said that it is a direct ranking factor now. So what we can do is we can open up our, our crawl like this. I just did it for chasegender.com. I just paste it in. Takes a second with Google Sheets. Okay, it's pasted in, and now it gives us all of our information. I actually think this is, uh, I, because I was messing around with the tabs earlier, um, it didn't line up perfectly. Um, I, just, I should just actually reset the layout. Let me go, um, configuration, user interface, reset columns for all tables. Now if I export it, it'll give me the right um, thing. I think you can also just control A, copy, and then paste it in. Yeah, so it looks like that worked. Um, maybe this crawl isn't reset because I had it set up that way before, but anyways, what will happen is I'll give you all the, I'll just go back here because I'm giving you a bad example. Don't mess with the columns. If, if it doesn't line up correctly, just cancel out of it and do a recrawl with the default settings on, on Screaming Frog. And then in here you can see, you know, status code, they're all green unless they're unless there's like a 404 or something, then it'll turn up red. Um, if the status code isn't there, then it'll turn red. Um, if it's not indexable, it'll show up red. Um, if the titles aren't there, it'll show up red. If the title length is over or under, it'll show up red. And then, so that way you can just hand these sheets to people to fix and, uh, you know, if the word counts under, um, that way they can just fix this stuff based on um, the conditional formatting, which makes things a lot easier. So again, if you wanna get that, I will leave a link to it in the description so you can go check it out. Um, also, I would definitely recommend getting into my mastermind group where I have all of my templates. Um, it's like, a, you know, and you get monthly classes. I've even put in, been putting leads in the, in the group um, from people who ask me for my services and I don't do services anymore. So um, that's like 27 bucks a month. It's the Chase Runner Mastermind. I'll leave a link to that as well. But um, that's kind of the basics to Screaming Frog. Um, what I might do, what I'm gonna end up probably doing in the future is um, doing a like a series where I just do audits with Screaming Frog so you guys can see me doing it live. If you wanna see me doing that, um, let me know and I will do that. I'll leave a link or I'll, I'll do that for you guys. But um, anyways, I'm gonna head out. Until we see you all next time, happy SEOing. See you next time, bye.